All right, what's going on everybody? So today I wanna to make a video talking about reverse dieting. So first things first, what is reverse dieting? So reverse dieting is a, a concept or a practice in which you take somebody who is in a caloric deficit and you slowly reverse them out of that caloric deficit by adding food very slowly in an attempt to build what we will call metabolic capacity. Um, so what we're trying to do is if we take somebody in a caloric deficit and we add maybe 100 calories per week, right? Like we, we slowly add food. What we're trying to do is train train our body and train our metabolism to take that food that we're increasing slowly and teach our body and our metabolism to utilize that food more efficiently so that we can, in essence, use every calorie that we're eating and we can build our metabolic capacity, which just means we can be eating a lot of food and not gaining a lot of body fat because we've slowly trained our body and trained our metabolism to efficiently use the food that we're giving it because we're giving it really slowly and we're not really uh, forcing the body to make a radical change. We're doing things really, really quickly and really simply. So I'm not entirely sure when this concept started. I know that this, this concept was started and it was popularized by Dr. Lane Norton, who back in the early to mid 2000s was kind of like the guy, like one of the original contest prep coaches and one of the original bodybuilding coaches. And this was something that I'm not sure if Lane Norton invented this concept of reverse dieting, but he, he definitely uh, popularized it. And he used to post a lot of articles on, on bodybuilding.com and, and a bunch of other social media outlets where he talked about the, the success of reverse dieting and a lot of client photos, which then caused a lot of other coaches to pick up that concept and then use it on their own, okay, and then get results from their clients. And then it kind of just snowballed from there. So a lot has changed since the reverse dieting concept was introduced in the early 2000s. And currently it's October 10th, I believe, of 2019. So we're just going to take a quick objective view at whether or not that concept is still relevant uh, and kind of how things have changed over the years. And this is personally from my opinion and from things that I have seen with client results and from my personal anecdotal uh, experience. So first things first, is reverse dieting applicable? Like, can people use it? I think that reverse dieting is applicable for some people and it in some situations, and it's not applicable in others. And so pretty much what I'm going to be doing with with this video is talking about the scenarios in which I think it is applicable and it can apply. And then the, the situations where I don't think it applies at all. And it, and it may actually be a bad idea. So first things first, um, what situations would a reverse diet actually be beneficial for? And there are a couple, um, first things first, I think the situation in which, a reverse diet can be beneficial as if you take somebody who has just completed uh, a mini cut in the middle of their off season and they are still at the end of this mini cut, they are still unhappy with how their body composition is doing and what it looks like. Okay. So to give an example, let's say we take somebody who's been pushing their, their bulking phase, their, their off season pretty hard and uh, they've accumulated some body fat. And so they take, six to 10 weeks, we'll, we'll say 10 weeks for this example, and they do a mini cut, which is a very aggressive caloric deficit and an attempt to lose as much weight and lose as much body fat as they can in a short amount of time so that they can quickly get back into a, a surplus. Well, let's say we take somebody that does a 10 week mini cut and they are at the end of that 10 weeks, they're still unhappy with how their body composition is. I think in a situation like that, it may 
be beneficial to do a reverse diet in that situation. And, and here's why. So let's say we take that individual and they do a 10 week caloric deficit where they're at, let's say they're at a 1000 calorie caloric deficit. So they're eating 1000 calories below their, uh, their maintenance level, maybe even a little bit more. And, uh, they've been doing that for 10 weeks. And if they're still unhappy with how their body composition looks, I think that continuing any further past that 10 weeks at that really aggressive caloric deficit, a thousand calories or more is probably going to be detrimental. We're starting to see through research and we, we see anecdotally with, with clients that once you are in an extreme caloric deficit for any longer than like eight to 10 weeks without a break, we start to really get some negative hormonal changes that take place. Our, our thyroid tends to, to slow down. We get some, some increased uh, hunger signals from our, our leptin increasing and our ghrelin decreasing. And I think that continuing uh, cortisol rises I think that continuing in a situation like that with a steep caloric deficit is probably doing more harm than good. So what we can do in that situation is we'll, we'll take this person who they're in a 1000 calorie deficit. And let's say that we slowly add calories by 100 calories each week as we go on. So what will happen is they're at a 1000 calorie deficit and then we add a hundred calories. Okay. So now the next week they're in a 900 calorie deficit. Then we add another hundred calories and now they're in an 800 calorie deficit. We do another hundred calories and they're in a 700 calorie deficit and repeat rinse and repeat. And it goes on and on and on. So what we're seeing in that situation is it's going to take, if someone's in a 1000 calorie deficit, it's going to take that person 10 weeks to get out of that deficit just to get back to maintenance. And in the situation of somebody who was still kind of fat from their, um, from their off season and they just finished a mini cut, I think that's actually beneficial because what you're starting to do in that instance is you're starting to relieve the diet fatigue that that really aggressive deficit caused. So you're starting to shift their hormonal panel back into uh, something that's optimal for, for building muscle and, and losing body fat. But at the same time, you're still keeping them in a deficit. So they were in a really, really aggressive deficit. You're slowly increasing it. That person is starting to feel better and better. Their hormone panel is getting better and better. And their performance in the gym is getting better and better because they're getting more food. And all while this stuff is going on, the person is still continuing to lose body fat. I think that's a best of both worlds scenario where everything is starting to improve and they're losing body fat. I think that's an instance where... Uh, you can't really lose. I want you guys to remember that specific scenario, the 1000 calorie deficit, and we're adding 100 calories, etc. because we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Another reason where I think that reverse dieting is applicable is an enhanced athlete coming out of a show. So in, in the instance of somebody coming out of a contest prep and for a lot of enhanced, for those who aren't aware, enhanced meaning drug using, steroid using bodybuilders, for people that are coming out of a contest prep, and and most people when they enhance athletes when they come out of a contest prep, they do like a clear out phase where they because they were running their drugs pretty high during the show, so they're they're starting to taper their drugs off or completely uh, get off the drugs post show, and if there are instances where people instead of clearing out of the drugs as they come out of the show, they keep some of the drugs in. And what they're trying to do in that situation is utilize a post-show rebound where they are really maximizing the insulin sensitivity from being really lean and their metabolism being charged up from, from being so lean. And they're, they're trying to use that as an opportunity to build a lot of muscle tissue while staying lean right out of a show so that they can set themselves up to be in, in a great position uh, in their off season as they go into their next show, the next year or the next season, whatever. I think reverse dieting in that scenario is beneficial. I don't think it's the best uh, option. I think if you're an enhanced athlete coming out of a show and you really want to utilize a rebound, I think that if you're going to keep drugs in that pushing the food a little bit is, is really going to be 
uh, very beneficial for you. I don't think that you should be slowly creeping your calories up in that in that instance. But if you've got 10 to 12 weeks or something before you're doing another show, so say you you do a state level show and you qualify for nationals and you've got 10 weeks or so in between, you don't really have enough time to do a full fledged off season in between there. And 10 weeks would be a long time to hold that condition. So I think that maybe doing a little bit of a reverse diet in that phase may actually be beneficial for you. Um, those are really the, the only two options and where I think that reverse dieting is, is actually optimal. Uh, let's talk about some of the situations where reverse dieting is commonly used. And I actually don't think that it should be used at all. And in some of these instances, I think it causes more harm than good. So instances where reverse dieting should never be used. I don't think that reverse dieting should ever be used for first time competitors, whether they're natural or they're enhanced. I, I don't think that that should ever be uh, utilized. Um, reason being is for somebody who's doing their first contest, there's a really good chance that they have never pushed their body like that before. They've never done uh, an extended diet that long or that aggressive before. So what that means is when they come out of the show, they're going to be extremely food focused. One of the main things, as much as we try to prevent this as coaches, one of the main things that they're going to be focusing on as they come out of the show is eating and eating a lot of food and eating the foods that they were craving during their diet. So if you tell somebody who just finished a 20 week contest prep, and during that 20 weeks, they were very limited on what they were eating and how much they were eating. If you tell that person that we're going to take 10 to 12, another 10 to 12 weeks coming out of your show to slowly add food to get you back in a position uh, to be successful, I don't think that's really possible for a lot of people to stick with that plan because they're so hyper food focused. And now they don't have the goal of, of the show date, right? Like a lot of people when they're on prep, they can stay motivated and stay disciplined and stick to their diet because they've got the show in mind. But once that show is done, for a lot of these people, they they really don't have any motivation or any reason to stick to a really calorie deprived diet. So I don't think that it's it's really physically possible for a lot of people to stick to a low calorie diet in, in that instance. Another instance where I don't think reverse dieting is optimal is for natural competitors, no matter how long that you've been competing, whether it's your first show or whether you've been competing for 10 years, I don't think if you're a natural athlete that reverse dieting is very beneficial for you. Um, reason being is what is your main goal? Hopefully when you come out of a show, it's to get muscle built, like build more muscle right away so that you can be better for your next show. But the thing with natural competitors who aren't utilizing drugs is when you get super physiologically lean, shredded, glutes are in, striated, everything, excuse me, the toll that that takes on your hormone panel is absolutely enormous. I mean, we've, we've seen natural competitors whose testosterone levels have dropped to like 80 nanograms per deciliter, which is beyond hypogonadal. That is like, that's like the testosterone of like a three-year-old. Like that's, that's absolutely terrible. Uh, so the, the point that I'm trying to make is even though you want to build muscle post-show, your body is not in a position hormonally to be able to do that. So it doesn't matter if you come out of the show and you the very next day you're back in the gym and you're training with lots of volume and you're training really hard and you're eating a lot of food. There's going to be a grace period for a natural athlete as they come out of the show before their hormonal panel can kind of tick over from being in a really shitty position to being in an optimal position to, to build muscle. It's going to take anywhere from like eight to 20 weeks for your testosterone to come back to normal. Uh, it's, it's going to take eight to 20 weeks depending for like your thyroid levels to come back to normal. Uh, and, and with your testosterone being that low, like good luck building any sort of, of muscle. If, if your testosterone is in the eighties or the 100 nanograms per deciliter. So if, if you're trying to reverse diet as you come out of the show for a, as a natural competitor, I don't think that that is 
beneficial for you at all. Uh, because even if you're, like I said, you're utilizing a really strong rebound, your body just isn't in a position to build any muscle, at least for a couple months before you can start to, to build new tissue on top of what you already have. It's funny, this morning I was on a walk and I was listening to the Revive Stronger podcast and I was listening to an episode with Eric Helms where he was talking about um, continuing to make progress, I think was, was the name of the episode. And he was talking about how his post-show thoughts have changed. And um, after his like fifth or something season of, of competing, he utilized a reverse diet and he was very successful with the reverse diet to the point where he said like five or six months after his show, his body weight was only up 10 pounds. And he said it was really cool for him to brag that post show he, and he had worked his calories up really high. I think he said he had worked his calories up to like 3,500 or 4,000 or something. So he was, he was eating 4,000 calories and he still had shredded hamstrings. And he said that was really cool to brag about because he was so lean and eating so much food, but he wasn't building any muscle because his body still hormonally hadn't ticked over back into, um, back into a healthy state. So for natural competitors, I think your best bet post show and, and take this liberally would be to get body fat on you as quickly as possible. Now, I don't mean a shitload of body fat. I mean like an adequate, healthy amount of, of body fat and a healthy, adequate amount of time. Um, because the faster that you get your body fat back on, the faster that you're going to get your hormone levels replenished into an, into an optimal state. And the faster you get your hormone panels optimized, the faster that you'll be able to start building muscle so that you can improve for your next show. So I think those are the two big reasons why people shouldn't be uh, reverse dieting is for natural competitors and then first time competitors, whether you're natural or enhanced, because I just don't think unless you're a complete robot that it's it's really physically possible for you to do. Okay, guys, so those are my my main thoughts on reverse dieting. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video. Uh, you can go ahead and DM me on Instagram. I leave my DM in, or excuse me, I leave my Instagram in the description of all my videos. And then if you are interested in online training or nutrition coaching, I have my uh, coaching email in the description, or you can just send me a DM on Instagram. All right, guys, hope you liked it. Have a good one.